Good day, my friends, and welcome to what is a very fantastic and awesome Wednesday. I hope you've been having a really great and amazing day as well. I'm coming to you live from the land of Mildura today before getting into a really awesome, awesome day. I'm going to move some things around because I feel like I need to be up and moving. So some things that I've noticed going on, and I know that this has been true for me too, and I've been pretty open with you guys around the things that have gone on in the past. I had a message from someone who I haven't actually had any contact with, not for any particular reason. Um, we just weren't very close. Had She reached out yesterday afternoon actually and just touched base, you know, hey, how are you going? What are you up to? And things like that. And I said, yeah, we're like really great, thank you. Hope things are going well for you. And, and I guess what it, what it prompted was I, I'd said a couple of things along the lines of, you know, think things look a lot, a lot different since I saw you last. It's, it's really cool, but, but you know, a lot of things are like a lot of things have changed for a lot of different reasons. So I haven't seen this lady since maybe mid 2015. So we're a good four and a half years down the track. Right. And for some people, like that's like a whole lifetimes happen. I'm a firm believer that we get to experience not just uh, like the, the literal time based time while we're here, but we also get, I, I feel like, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the last four and a half years, I've lived probably 30 different lifetimes, 30 different iterations um, of, of different learning and experiences and growth and and, and things like that. So it's kind of interesting. Like time's a really interesting thing. Um, I can't even believe that this time, this time last week, I landed back in Australia after being in, in the States for, for just over a week. So, you know, time is really kind of interesting. It's an, it's an interesting kind of concept. So anyway, I said to her, yeah, look, you know, all of this stuff happened and rah, rah, rah. But the last time I spoke to her, I was very much, very, very well known for being the, the Facebook ads person. You know, this is how you do Facebook ads. This is how you make money from, from doing Facebook, from doing Facebook ads. Uh, I, I've been delivering trainings for, for years on how to build your funnels, how to do your advertising, how to make all of those work, how to make sales, been running events, you know, doing all of these really great things. And I was doing those things because I felt like I, well, it was, it was like it was what I was known for. It was like what I had to do. Right. And, and it took, you know, there, there's things that happened. Some of them were quite traumatic, um, for, for myself and for my family. And, and it really prompted me to go, you know, Hey, actually, you know what? Life is too fucking short. Um, this is really done. So, so many of us get caught up in doing the things that we feel like we should be doing in terms of delivery, in terms of business, in terms of programs, in terms of content, in terms of absolutely everything that, gets done, right? I, I'm, I'm sure it's not just me who has experienced this. And sometimes when, when we're doing things, or well not sometimes, but my actual opinion is that when we're doing things that we're not actually here to do for an extended period of time, it creates fractures in your life and in your world. And that can have a look in your health, your mental health, your family, your relationships, your money, your spirituality, your belief, your faith, your effervescence. You know, all of this stuff ends up or can end up being somewhat fractured. And so the signs are there, right? That, that, you're, that you're potentially doing the things that you're not supposed to be doing. So what I wanted to do with you today, if you've ever felt like this, I just wanted to step you through a brief visualization that's going to help you just to kind of like, I guess, like recalibrate, check in, and maybe this is the sign that you've been waiting for to actually do the thing that you really, really want to be doing. So uh, I'm going to run through this with you so I can't see you. So I'm going to just trust that, that you are with me, that you're following along. And for some reason, my internet is not showing any comments. So if you are commenting, I hope you're commenting and let not in, when we're in the visualization, but let me know that you can actually hear me. Let me know that this is being helpful for you as we're moving through and we'll go from there. So here's what I want you to do. I just want you to take a moment, no matter where it is that you are at the moment, unless you're driving and then please keep your eyes on the road and do not close your eyes. But if you are in a place where you can close your eyes, then here's what I want you to do. Close your eyes. Make sure your feet are placed firmly on the ground so that you're nice and grounded. I just want you to take some deep breaths in. So as we breathe in, we're gonna breathe in for six counts. 
Hold for three. And breathe out for six. Hold for three. And then breathe in for six. Hold for three. And then breathe out for six. And as you're joining us, as you're listening, you're just getting into a really beautiful, relaxed state. If you can hear noises around you, you notice that you can easily come back and just listen to what's going on. Listening to the thing that you know is going to help move you forward. So I want you to think back for a minute to a time when you're a child, probably less than 10 years old, and you had this idea about what you wanted to do, who you wanted to be when you grew up. Maybe it was about being a teacher, maybe it was a vet, maybe it was a lawyer, maybe you wanted to be a farmer or a race car driver, police officer, fireman or a fireman here in the States, or your teacher on stage, an actor or an actress. Around the time that we're you know, somewhere between five and seven years old, we often have these thoughts and dreams and desires about what we want to do when we grow up. Or an artist, beautiful, amazing, or a singer. Maybe you wanted to build houses. Maybe you wanted to be a fashion designer. Maybe you just loved making things beautiful. Maybe you're really great at, at creating things from nothing. You know, imaginative play. So think about that. And think about how fun it seemed about how beautiful it seemed, how real and how possible it felt. So when you're somewhere between five and 10 years old, like we start to think that the world, like we believe that the world is our oyster. We absolutely believe that we can do anything. We're invincible. Heck, you know, I, I know someone who's less than 10 years old who believes he can fly. Amazing, like you, you can believe anything. And then what I want you to do is now fast forward a little bit further, maybe somewhere between the ages of 10 and 13, and you started imagining what it was that you wanted to do and be as you grew up. Now usually between the ages of 10 and 13, what we start to think about and, and I remember you know, some of the things that we're, we're, we're considering is like, what's a little bit more realistic? You know, what is it that we're, what was it that you wanted to do? But then maybe you were talked out of it. What do you think about it? Are you doing that thing that you thought that you wanted to be doing when you were a child? Now, if we fast forward a little bit later on in our life, <laughs> We, oftentimes we end up doing the things that we're doing, not because it's necessarily what we wanted to do, but more because it's what we were told to do, what was suggested, what seemed like the right path for you based on external feedback, maybe based on what university courses were available or what jobs were available at the time. Just as you're joining us, just listen in. What I want you to do is fast forward now to sometime, maybe two, maybe three years into the future from now. And I want you to think about standing in the wings of a stage. You're in a really, really big stadium or theatre and you're in the wings. And this night where you're here, 
is all about honoring you. There is somebody standing out, about to walk out, actually they're about to walk out on stage and take the podium so that they can introduce you. But what you're doing to start with is like you're in the wings and you're looking in the mirror at yourself in the mirror and you look the best that you have ever, ever looked, right? You look, you're, you look amazing. You are glowing, you're dressed fabulously, you're fit, you're healthy, you're radiant, your makeup's awesome and you're looking at yourself in this mirror as being like, I freaking rock, <laughs> this is amazing. Now you're a little bit cheeky and you can't help yourself. So what you've done is you've then you've just sort of like pulled a little bit of the curtain aside and you've taken a peek out into the audience. And you can see all of the people. This place is packed. This place is absolutely jam-packed. And you're looking at all of these people and you're recognizing them. Like you recognize the people that are in this room and you start to realize that all of these people, these hundreds of people, these thousands of people, are all people who you have worked with, whose lives you've touched, whose perhaps their families you've helped, this, this, this stadium, this arena, this theatre, this, this place, this venue is packed to the rafters. No one else could possibly get in here. And they're all smiling. And you kind of like, you can hear, you have this amazing supersonic hearing right now. And you can hear them talking about you. And you can hear them sharing their stories of how you have impacted them, how you have inspired them, how you have motivated them, how you have healed them, how you have uh, counseled them, how you've been available, how you've been able to do the thing that you do. And you can hear them saying like, nobody else could possibly have done this in the way that you did it. And you're just like, Wow, fuck, that's really freaking amazing. You had no idea that, number one, you had no idea that this was even being put on. So they, they, the organizers got you here under the guise of something different. So not only are you just like, oh my God, this is insane. You had no clue that this was even going to happen and not actually honoring you. So as you're looking, you're like you've, you've looked out there, you've pulled the curtain back across, you're looking in the mirror and you're just like, well fucking done. You know, well done, thank you self for, for helping me get to where it is that I am right now because you know, all of these things would never have happened. And so you see someone who you respect, probably the most in the world, comes out on stage and starts to say things about you. Really amazing, jaw-dropping things about you. And they say, they ask everybody in this place to, to raise their glass to you. They raise their glass, they put them down. The whole place erupts in applause and cheers as you are introduced. And out you, you don't walk, right? You levitate out onto this stage. Now you're mic'd up, so you don't have to take the lectern. In fact, like that's gone. Like, so the stage is yours. And one of the things that you've been asked to do as, as part of this whole thing is share with the audience something that has been really profound for you. What has been the thing that has kept you going, that has kept you moving forward? What is the thing that reminded you of who you are? What is the thing that reminded you of what it is that you're actually here to do? And, and you're talking to these people about how you've taken leaps of faith, how you've backed yourself, how you've been scared, how you've failed more times than you could possibly count, but you've all, you, like, you just keep going, you've just kept trying, you've just kept finding a way forward. Do you talk about resilience? You talk about all of that. So what I want you to do 
as it's soaking all of these beautiful things in, all of these amazing things in. Start to remember that this is kind of like that feeling of being anywhere between five and 10 years old as you imagined what it was that you were going to do when you grow up. The sheer amount of joy that you feel and that you experience doing what it is that you do, the way that you're able to do it like nobody else possibly could. So you tell them, you remind them how to find that joy. You remind them how to actually tap into all of this, right? You, you find a way to be able to motivate and inspire them. And as you finish, before you even finish, they're all like standing up, standing ovation, they're cheering, they freaking love you. And you say, thank you. You bow, curtsy. And as you're exiting stage left, you actually don't go back into the backstage area. You take the stairs down to the floor and you're going to mingle with the people. So off you go, you're mingling with all of these people and they're just, they're just saying how grateful they are for your presence. They're grateful for your resilience because without it, you wouldn't have been able to work with them. They're grateful for the things that you've been able to do with and for them. They're grateful for the impact, the ripple effect, the amazingness that you've been able to help them uncover, discover and, and clear out so that they can have more of what it is that they want. Someone comes and taps you on the shoulder and says that it's time for you to go. As you go, you're stepping into the backstage area. You start to breathe normally again. And you're just like, this is freaking amazing. You sit in it. There's an area in the backstage area where you can just sit down and close your eyes for a moment. And you're breathing nice and deeply. And you're just relishing in this moment. So just sit in that for a minute and you remember all of those things that have been said. All of the beautiful feelings. You sit in that for a moment. When you're ready, you can come back in, open your eyes, you can come back into the, the now, <laughs> this now, not the backstage now. And I just want you to take a little bit of time to write out what it was that people were saying. What was it that reminded you of being that kid being able to do whatever it was, like capture this. I'd, I'd very strongly encourage you to do it like right now. So take some time right now to write this stuff out. What are people saying? What, are, what, did people, what were you doing? What happened? What was going on? Because you guys, it's, it's the, the clues more often than not, the clues and the hints to your purpose work, the clues and the hints to you know, that, that thing that, that you've been put on this earth to do are often given to us throughout our childhood. But we get, we get busy listening to bullshit from other people about what we should do, how we should do it, that the kinds of things that we should be being and doing and having and saying and, and how we should be. And honestly, you know, as a kid, these kids that don't, that, that they just feel it, they just want anything. Like my son wants to be a pro baseball player. And as a parent, I'm like, oh, but that means you'd be leaving me. Or, you know, as a parent, I'm like, yeah, go, go, go. That'd be amazing. But even like there's still some things now where he's like, oh yeah, but that probably won't happen. I'm like, dude, if that's what you want, you fucking chase it. Right? 
you know, my, my daughter wants to be, was wanted to be a vet. And it's like, well, you know what? You've just got to make these different things happen. Right? So like there's, there's all of these, there's these clues from when we were children that we tend to ignore. And it's not always the thing that you do as kids that might be the thing that you actually end up doing as an adult, that, that is your actual purpose work. But oftentimes the other piece of all of this is, is the feeling, right? So the, this, we want to capture that feeling and then it's doing what you're doing now, creating that feeling of freedom and choice and the an alignment. You know, because if it's not, if what you're doing doesn't feel aligned, if what you're doing does not bring you joy, then you're missing the point. You, you, you're just, well, you're not missing the point. You, you, you're, we're surviving, right? This is what, what it was for me. It's like, I'm just surviving. Like I'm doing the thing that I have to do because this is the thing that I have to do. And the thing that I think that, that happens is we get so caught up in you know, what we might lose when we make these shifts and when we make these changes. And it can be like, yeah, but you know, I'm, this, is, this thing is making money. This is what it was for me. That the, the business model in the way that I was doing it was making money. We were living a, not that we're not living a great life now, but we're living a, a, a very different life when we're making, when I was making a million dollars a year and my husband's doing his thing. You know, it's a very different life. It, there's, a, there's a lot to lose, by like going, you know what, this is actually, this is not working for me, right? Even though I, I, I've gone through, I, like at around the same time that this, this lady and I stopped talking, or not that we didn't stop talking, but we, we, we didn't remain connected. We were in part of different communities at that point in the middle of 2015. And we shared a mentor at the time and it was that particular mentor that said, you know, you've got to keep doing this thing because this is what you should be doing because this is, this is what people know you for, right? I, I tried to to kill the business in two, at the end of you know the start of 2015 and then in 2016 it was like it was great but it was not doing everything that I wanted it to do so if it's not bringing you joy if it's not aligned then these other things can happen that will force a decision to be made Right, and I've got to tell you, I was chatting with another girlfriend who's known me for a really long time. Um, I'd say my so my son's eleven, so she's known me for uh, eleven years, at least eleven years. And she said to me last week, I met her at the airport, uh, or she came in and, and met me at the airport last Wednesday when I spent all day sitting in Melbourne Airport. And she said, Nick, you're glowing. The way that you are now, she said, this is how I, like the way that I am online, this is how you were when I knew you when we worked for the bank, not the professional Nicola that would go and face clients, but the Nicola behind the scenes Nicola. She said, it's so great, to, it's so great to see. And it's like, well, it's because I just made this decision to actually, um, to do the thing that I'm here to do, to trust that whatever message is supposed to come through is absolutely going to come through, to, to go the hell with all of those things that, that I ha felt like I had to do but because I've become hogtied by this business and hogtied by the money, hogtied by the success, hogtied by all of this, like that by, what, by what I'd created. I'd created a gilded cage, right? And so that for me was not something that was conducive to, to me being able to do this kind of thing. Right? I wanted to have these types of conversations publicly with people. I wanted to be able to do this stuff, but I was told, no, you have to do this. You have to do this. You know, you've got to follow the model. You've got to follow, you know, follow the plan, follow the structure. And I'm a huge fan of plan and structure unless it's hindering your soul's work, your, your whole purpose for being here. So that's what I have for you today. Um, now, what I am doing just as a, as a thing to let you guys know, I guess, like the thing that I really feel is necessary is that, that number one, you're doing the work that you're here to do, right? So go and do the, um, go, like if, you, if you're just catching up, we've been doing a whole visualization thing. So you'll go back and have a listen to the replay. Um, it's just, I, I, I love the shit out of this particular, this particular thing that, that we've done today. And I think it's really powerful for you guys too. And, and it's something that I've been stepping my clients through more and they're just like, oh, this is fantastic. And it's actually really helped them then to get out and do the things that they really want to do, right? Because it's that alignment piece. So yeah, that's that. I mean, I'm a huge, 
I'm a huge advocate for showing up for for showing up as the authentic version of you, and uh, I hate Julie for you being able to share your gifts, your message, your thing with the world. And and it does come down to being visible, but alignment first. It's always alignment first, and I have been talking about that for fucking years. So alignment all the way, and then we get into planning, and then we get into the strategy, and then you get into the tactics. Because otherwise, you end up creating something that can become like this beast and can actually sometimes end up becoming like bigger than Ben Hur, and and we get wooed by the by the the theater of all of that. But if it's not really who you are at, at your core, then it's not really going to last in the way that we want it to. So there you are, there you have it. So visibility is really important, but coming from that place of you first. So what I'm doing tomorrow, I'm actually running a webinar tomorrow, another pop-up webinar. It is happening at 12 p.m. It's free. It's a free 90-minute masterclass. It is happening tomorrow at 12 o'clock Sydney time, which means 6 o'clock um, LA time, 9 p.m. New York um, that would be 9 a.m. Western Australian time. So come and hang out with me on there. I'm going to step you through the three main things that, that are really necessary when it comes and why visibility is so important. How to make it work for you, how to make social media work for you. And I have come up with a brand new, freaking amazing program that is going to knock your socks off. So I'll, I'll share a little bit about that with you tomorrow as well. And yeah, it's just going to be epic. So I've just put the link in there. You should be able to see that. I don't know why I can't. Oh, there we go. Uh, like I said, it's a free 90 minute masterclass. So come along and hang out tomorrow and let me know how you go with this visualization. Go back and have a listen to the replay. And I'd love to hear, I'd absolutely love to hear what or hear, <laughs> Julie for you. I would love to hear what comes up for you. You know, are you doing the thing that you that you feel like you're put on this earth to do? And and if not, how are you going to recalibrate that? Because life is too fucking short. So there you have it, my friends. Have an amazing day. Get out there, go help some people. Be amazing and fabulous. And remember that the world is ready for your brand of awesomeness. And I can't wait to hear what comes up. Okay, see ya. I'll talk to you tomorrow.